Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shacham. I think it's a wonderful introductory to our next uh, talk. You know, you, it's like we planned it, but we didn't. And I want to invite Professor Tova Milo, which is, uh, was the former chair of the computer science department at Tel Aviv University, and uh, the chair of computer Inform uh, informatics, and uh, an ERC laureate, if we can call it like that. And uh, she will talk about crowd mining. Thank you. If I manage to get my slides on. Yeah. Uh, that's okay, don't worry. No, that's fine, don't worry. All is good. Okay. Okay. So uh, I can tell you that the most frustrating thing uh, in being a researcher is that you cannot explain anyone what you're doing. You try to explain to your friends what you're doing for research and they don't understand. You try to explain why you're very excited about what you're doing, the details of things. Nobody understands what you're doing. And I think this is the first project that I'm working on that I can tell everybody and everybody understands after five minutes, and this is really cool. So I love this project. It's very, very nice. <laughs> Even my kids can understand, which is uh, wonderful. So uh, let us start. So uh, I'm sure you all know that the world uh, is exploding of information. Uh, you have the web, you have satellites, you have sensors, you have tons of information. We're buried in tons of information. And, and everybody tells us that there are lots of opportunities in this data. If we will manage to analyze it, uh, we will find cure for many diseases, we will find better economical models, et cetera, et cetera. And, but the thing is that the data by itself is not enough. You actually have to harvest it, you have to analyze it, and you have to get the knowledge uh, out of the data. And this includes many things. You need to represent this information. You have to collect it, transform it, integrate it, etc. So there's tons of data out there, but the data that I want to talk about today is actually about the data that is in our brains, your brains, like everybody's brain. How can we take all this information, all the knowledge that people have and, and hold, and try to, do, to use it uh, uh, as a collective uh, uh, data source? Okay, so in general, in jargon, uh, uh, this area of uh, uh, research or uh, usage is called uh, uh, crowdsourcing. And I'm sure some of you, uh, even if you're not doing research at all, uh, you're experiencing it, it and, and using it in real life. Like everybody's using Wikipedia, for instance. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia that was generated by collecting information from people. People contributed the knowledge that they have and we're all using it. The same for TripAdvisor. If you want to uh, go for, uh, to a hotel, you look at TripAdvisor, you find recommendations of people, you have a lot of information that was collected from, uh, from people. So these two I'm sure you're, uh, you're using, but does anyone know Galaxy Zoo? Do you know what's that? So it's a computer game. Actually, it's the, the one of the favorite games of my younger son. And uh, uh, this game, what it does, it shows you pictures taken by the Hubble telescope, and uh, you have galaxies there that are shown in the pictures, and you're supposed to uh, mark very fast and answer questions like, is this galaxy oval? Is it round? Is it red? All these kind of uh, questions. So this sounds like nothing to do with crowdsourcing, but actually what is happening behind the scene is that from the answers of the players of this game, there is a big database uh, uh, that is constructed with properties of galaxies. And then researchers that are looking for galaxies with different properties can use th this database that was actually constructed by my son and other players uh, uh, that, that play this game. So uh, uh, another type of game uh, uh, very similar to that is something which is called Foldit. Foldit uh, 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 is a game that shows you uh, uh, um, proteins, like pictures of proteins, and asks the, the players to fold them. And uh, uh, folding of a protein is something which is very important to uh, uh, understand the structure of a protein, and, and it's a very expensive computational task. But apparently people have properties, vision properties, that enable them to find the good uh, structure and folding of the protein. And actually, a couple of years ago, uh, this game was on the front page of uh, um, New York Times, 
because the players man managed to find a, a folding of the protein which is uh, related to the HIV uh, uh, disease which was not known before. So uh, to summarize what, what these things do, these crowdsourcing uh, uh, platforms do, they try to uh, uh, use the crowd in order to do things, to do smart things, new things, collect information, etc. So it sounds like, okay, cool, there are all these tools, they are very great, and uh, uh, why do we need to do any research in that? Uh, the thing is that there's tons of potential in human knowledge, and all these projects are really just scratching the surface of what you can do with human knowledge, and the reason that uh, uh, this area is not more uh, uh, advanced and there are n not more things that, uh, that are happening is really because there is no scientific foundation for, for the development of these tools. Every project that you want to invent a new thing that uses the crowd, you have to really start from scratch. You have to understand how to use the crowd, how to use the data, how to analyze it, how to find errors, etc., etc. And every initiative does it completely for scra from scratch. So what we're trying to do in this uh, 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 project, which is an ERC project uh, 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 that I'm leading, is really developing the scientific foundations that will enable creating this kind of games or platforms, etc., for collecting information from the crowd in a much more efficient way. Uh, but before I'll tell you uh, what we're doing in the project, I want to tell you a story. So originally, this story will sound completely irrelevant to everything that I've been uh, discussing so far, but I promise you that at the end, uh, we will see that it is related. So it's a story about my son. I have a 19-year-old uh, uh, son. Last year, uh, he finished high school, and uh, uh, he, was, uh, he had a few months before he, uh, he was supposed to be recruited to the army. And then one day he came home and he said, look, mommy, uh, uh, I heard my friends told me about this startup in San Francisco that is taking, uh, recruiting uh, smart kids like me that uh, just finished high school uh, for a few months to come and work. It's a software company to come and work uh, 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 in the company before they, uh, they go to the army. So I told him, look, uh, Yuval, Yuval is the name of my son. Uh, look, Yuval, I mean, you're very smart, but you don't really know to program. I mean, uh, that's... You're, how can you go to work for this company? So I said, mommy, don't worry, I'll manage. Every time that I tell him you cannot do something, he tells me, mommy, don't worry, I'll manage. And normally he manages, but I couldn't figure out how he's going to manage this time. So I went to work, uh, then I came in the afternoon uh, home, so I asked him, uh, Yuval, wh what did you do? So he said, I uh, uh, arranged for, my for myself a Skype interview with, uh, uh, with a company. They interviewed me, it went very well, and uh, uh, they gave me a task. So I asked him, what is the task? Uh, so he said, well, I'm supposed to write a program that looks at the data on the web and, and creates a, the longest possible list of names of uh, bloggers that write technology blogs. So I said, OK, uh, uh, can you do it? So he said, no, no, but you can help me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I said, look, uh, uh, I can explain in general what it requires. You need to write two pieces of software, OK? One piece of software is something which is called a crawler, which kind of crawls pages in the web, like discovers pages in the world, in the, in the web. And the second part is some, something which is called scrapper that takes a web page and finds in it an interesting pattern. So in your case, the interesting pattern is the name of uh, 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 the blogger. So this, you have to write these two things, put them together, and it will work. So I said, OK, can you help me writing, writing that? <laughs> So I told him, look, this is very complicated. I cannot do it uh, uh, you know, right now. Uh, uh, it, it's too complicated. So I said, don't worry, I'll manage. <laughs> OK. I went uh, uh, to, my, to, do, to do things. And then two hours later, I, I came and asked him, OK, Yuval, uh, uh, what's going on? Uh, did you advance? So I said, oh, no problem. I looked at some forums uh, uh, on the web. I asked some, uh, uh, some people. And eventually, from all the crawlers that were there, I managed to factorize this piece of code. And then from all the uh, uh, scrappers that were there, I managed to factorize this piece of code. And then still, I'm just missing something. People told me that I have to replace something which is called a regular expression in the, in the code. So uh, can you explain to me what is a regular expression? So I told him, look, uh, uh, Yuval, we have a full course in the university that explains what regular expressions are and how you write them. I cannot explain that in two minutes. So he said, don't worry, I'll manage. Okay, at that point it was midnight already, I went to sleep, 
And then in the morning, I woke up and I asked him, okay, uh, uh, what happened? So he said, that's fine. I managed to find on the, uh, in some forum someone that could write a regular expression for me and explain to me how to put the things. I put it and I sent the software. Okay, I was very happy, uh, uh, and now we can move on. I'll tell you at the end whether he got the job or not, okay? But uh, uh, how is this related to our, uh, uh, to, to crowdsourcing or crowd mining or, or the project that I'm working on? So let's try to, to, to see in research ter uh, uh, terminology what we had here, okay? So my son came with an underspecified question, okay? He said, I want to find this, okay? And it was in a natural language, and this is often how things happen. And actually, in order to solve this question, he had to, uh, we had to search, or he had to search, or he searched, to find relevant patterns, relevant information that he factorized from things on the web, from talking to people, from forums, from various information sources. And on the web, there's tons of relevant information, but you have to harvest it, you have to find the relevant things, and, and the information often also is natural language. So it's very hard to process. And part of it is simply in people's mind. These hackers that write the programs and crawlers and things like that, only they know how to do it. So, so my son is a very smart kid. He did it by himself. He searched, he looked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what we want to do, or what this project is all about, is really developing tools that will enable people to ask questions which will automatically find the relevant information in databases or in people's minds in order to uh, 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 um, collect them and, and uh, uh, analyze them together. And it has many important application, uh, uh, appli uh, application domains from medicine, social studies, education, et cetera. Just to convince you, I'll give you uh, uh, another example, okay? So suppose uh, uh, I'm going to Jerusalem uh, uh, with my kids and I'm looking for, uh, uh, what I want to do is I, I want to go fast, but I want to stop on the way in a, in a good restaurant. And I w since I have a, a, a young child, I want uh, uh, some child the restaurant to have some child-friendly activity and that it will not take too long. That's what I want to do, okay? So the kind of answers that would be good for this kind of question is, for instance, take <coughs> route number one and stop a castle restaurant. They have a petting zoo. And also, something that I didn't ask about, but that's a relevant information. If you do that, then you should bring lattice for the rabbits in the, in the petting zoo. Okay, that's a good answer, okay? Even though I didn't really ask all the details, but it kind of thought what might be relevant and help me. Or another uh, 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 answer could be take route, uh, uh, for for one, stop at the, in the shade, and the kids can play in the garden. And look, this is not the fastest road that you ask, but it's worth going there because it's really nice, and uh, you don't have to wait too long in line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you look at this question and the answers, there is some information that really exists in, in existing repositories. What kind of ro ro uh, routes you can find to Jerusalem? What kind of restaurants there are? What kind of attractions there are in the restaurant? But all the other information, the fact that it's a good restaurant, the fact that it's a good place for the kids, or that uh, uh, even though it's a bit slower, it's worthwhile doing that, all this information is information that com comes from people. And what I would like to do is to have uh, uh, something that kind of combines existing information with information that really only people know to put them together to answer questions uh, 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 like that. So. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about what we're doing, but that, that's the general architecture of the system that we're developing. Uh, looks very scary, but it's not that scary. It has many components. I'll just tell you the general flow of how the system works. Okay, so you have a person, they ask a question in a natural language. Okay, so the first thing that the, uh, uh, that the system does, it analyzes the natural language uh, question and transforms it into a formal query that the computer can understand. Now, this query typically deals with two types, needs two types of information, okay? One that is like the names of the restaurants or the names of the routes or, uh, uh, or things like that, which reside in traditional repositories and you can find them there. But some information is missing, like is it a good restaurant? How fast uh, you can go right now? Are there traffic jams, etc.? And this part, we go and mine from the crowd. So we develop games like the ones that I showed you before, uh, uh, 
uh, where people play the game and answer the questions or, or like in ways you get points uh, uh, for answering questions, etc. And also an important component of the system is choosing the crowd. Who should you ask? If I want to uh, a restaurant that is nice for kids, it's better to ask people that have kids or that are driving to Jerusalem often. So you have to select the crowd that is relevant for us answering uh, uh, your thing. And, and you want to combine all these things together. So I'm not gonna tell you how these things work. I only, I'm only gonna tell you that there are many, many interesting research problems that one has to solve, like what questions should you ask the crowd and what questions should you look in existing repositories? How do you know that the answers that you get are correct? Because people can make mistakes or maybe they don't know the answers. So you have to de uh, develop to, uh, tools to understand when answers are correct and also who you should ask and how many people. When can you decide that the answer that you have is good enough and, and how to best use your resources? Because for instance, uh, in this uh, uh, game that my, that my uh, uh, kids play uh, with a telescope, they cannot play all day, right? They have half an hour to play. So you want to ask them in the time that they play the questions that will give the information the most knowledge, that will use them the best. So it's a, uh, so it's a difficult optimization problem. Now, I'm a database person, a database researcher in general. So in this project, we're using technology and tools that are classical in uh, uh, databases like data mining, like probabilistic data, data cleaning, optimization, et cetera, and we're adapting them to this crowd uh, uh, context. Um, I hope you were convinced that that's a cool topic and uh, you understood a little bit what I'm working on. I want to conclude uh, uh, with one phrase that I really, really like. So Pablo Picasso uh, uh, said that computers are, use computers are useless because they can only give you answers. And actually what we're trying to do in this project, we are trying to make computers ask questions to people in order to collect the information. So hopefully if he would be here now, uh, he might have thought that computers are a little bit less useless uh, uh, than he thought. And this project has many, many challenges because the, the computation that we're doing is very interactive. You work with people, you have to take their psychology into consideration. You work with huge amounts of data and the data is, is varying very fast. The quality is changing and you have to deal with all these things in order to generate actually meaning, uh, meaningful information. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> well, ah, about the story. Okay, so A, he got the job. He's a smart kid, I told you. And B, he decided that rather than spending his summer uh, uh, working really, really hard in San Francisco, he'd rather go to the beach, play with his friends. And so I told you, he's a very smart kid. So he didn't go. 